Welcome to Piggy Power. Today I'm going to show you how to change the clutch on a Peugeot 306. Hoppa! All right. Now, usually I'd show you all the tools you might need. I'm going to show you as they go. You're going to need a decent toolkit. I'm not saying you need like a massive rack of tools. Maybe you have more tools than me already. That's great. You're going to need a couple of jacks. You're going to need a way to support the engine and the car. You're going to need all the basic sockets, decent impact guns or breaker bars, uh, a clutch alignment, some sort of dowel. I'll show you that later. Um, you're just going to need a decent toolkit. One or two spanners and a screwdriver probably aren't going to cut it on this one. Uh, as far as parts, just make sure with these Peugeots you get some decent parts. A clutch isn't too bad on one of these, but what you don't want to be doing is fitting a really cheap clutch and then just doing the same job next year. So LU clay clutch kits, they're really not that expensive. I think I'm supplying this to the customer for about £140. So really, you know, saving 40, 50 quid on a cheaper one, it's not really worth it. Drive shaft seals, just get them. Seriously, again, for the effort, takes a couple of seconds to change once the box is out let's have them done they're a few quid about 15 quid a pair 20 quid a pair get the right oil i'm actually putting a gearbox in this uh, car as well and part of the reason i would suspect is the wrong oil's been used or no oil this is about three or four pound a liter more expensive than cheap oil of 75 80 it's the proper stuff total gear eight you've probably heard me raving about this before use the proper stuff it's not that expensive and it will save your gearbox nicer shifts just be kind to your car. Sure. Right, first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to raise the vehicle up, get the bonnet up, get some lights ready, and we'll show you step by step the basic steps how to remove this gearbox. Hey, let's go. Vehicle up in the air. It wants to be a fair bit up in the air because once you drop the gearbox down, you don't want to be, well, stuck. You want to be able to have enough clearance to grab, grab it, pull it out from underneath the vehicle. So keep that in mind. Depth of gearbox, and you want to be able to get underneath it safely and easily, you know, if you're squished under there, trying to work, you'll probably hurt yourself and not be able to undo something. So we'll get the wheels off in a moment. And then as you can probably see, the rear under tray is in place. So there's a few bolts, a couple of clips. We'll drop that under tray out of the way. It's two 13s, a couple of 10s, a couple of cable ties. Um, yours probably, if I'm honest, won't have that. So get the wheels off, get the tray out, and we'll work from underneath first, then come back on top. You can start on the top. I just like to get some of the drive shafts and stuff, bigger stuff out of the way first before I start fiddling around with little bits. You also need to remove the inner splash guards, not the full arch liners. Usually there's a little popper there, a popper there, and a popper there. Uh, as you can see, two are broken. We can replace those for the customer. Uh, but they've done the usual thing, which I would often do as well, put a cable tie on that one. It's usually quite easy. You can just kind of pull it out of the way. It snags on at the front there. Give it a wiggle and she's off. Okay, so that's the under tray and the side splash guard. We'll probably do the same on the other side and I'll show you why. So on this side, it's not essential to remove it, but we're trying to get this shaft out here, which you're gonna to have to do. It just gives you a little bit more room to play with your hands and your face in there. Uh, someone's popped a bolt on that, that's not normal, that's just a little popper usually. So they pop popper like that, popper like that. So we'll see what that's about, but we'll get that tray out of the way, or splash guard out of the way as well. Uh, and then we'll talk about removing the drive shafts. It's at this point really you want to drain the gearbox. Do this pretty early on, so the gearbox then is as drained as possible uh, for when you drain the drive shafts out. You don't want oil, gearbox oil's horrible, it's my like least favourite liquid in the world I expect, if I was going to be honest with you. So. Uh, Let's get that draining now, so that then we're not having issues with it later. I think it's a 21 or something, but if you haven't got the square drive, as I say, not an issue. Uh, just be ready for some disgusting fluid to come out, because, oh, gearbox oil is just horrible. I hate it. It stinks. Nearly as bad as ATF. There we go. Oh, that is not good. Wow. Well, that, <laughs> other than the fact it's very metallic, might explain why the gearbox blew. But this is all about clutches. Uh, so, and it does look like something's been in here before. A bit weird. Anyway, that would explain why. That's why we put gearbox oil in people. Right, that's draining. 
let's start taking these shafts out. So first part of shaft removal uh, is these big nuts here. So this is the locking pin. You can use a pair of pliers or a screwdriver to flick that out. We need to put it in our parts bin, not in the bin. I always use, I generally use one pot for everything below the surface, if you like. So anything kind of below this level goes in one pot and everything above that level from the bonnet end, I put it in a different pot. Uh, I mean, you could use one pot for every corner and everything, but I think that's important. Okay, 35 or 36, depends on what nut it is, but a 36 works fine. Big cheat gun. That's how you get it undone. What if you don't have a big cheat gun? Well, let's do it the other side without that, shall we? Just to show we can. So here's our setup this side. We have a pin, bolt, something big, screwdriver, strong. This is a punch in between the vents and in between the caliper carrier to prevent it turning. And then just so you don't snap off your little disc retainer screws, a couple of wheel bolts back in the threads. And then we just get a breaker bar or something with a decent length on it. And we're just going to turn it like this. There we go. Shouldn't be very tight, he says. And then we can just spin it off the rest by hand. And before you walk away, get your copper hammer. Just give it a thump. You see how the shaft moved in and out then of the splines? They can get seized on the splines on the hub inside here. Um, and if that's the case, you never get it out. So give it a good smack. At this point, especially with the nut still on the end, protects the threads and gets it moving. There we go. Make sure the other side's free, and then we're gonna drop these ball joints. Show that in a second. Okay, so we're gonna remove this bolt here, which is a pinch bolt holding the lower ball joint on. It should be a 16 and a 17, um, but as it happens, it seems to be a 17 and a 15, which tells me it's probably the wrong bolt. We'll soon find out in a second. You don't have to use a cheat gun. I'm just cheating for the speed of, well, the speed of the thing. Right. You might need to punch this bolt out. I oh, know, it's the right bolt. It's just uh, someone's got the wrong nut on it. It's actually not a locking nut. It should be a thread lock nut, and it's not. So that explains why it's a 15. We'll have to replace that. Uh, MOT should pick up on that. Now, to drop the ball joint off the hub, get a big long lever bar in here. And if it hasn't been stuck on it for 15 years, it might just drop straight down. But if it hasn't, it won't. So, oh, it's trying to move. Two options. One, a hammer. Two, a little lever. You could do both. To show you both methods, we will pull this bar out first. Be careful you don't damage the CB boot. No, nope, it's all good. Um, is that there is a split in our ball joint, in our hub, I should say, in the pinch. So we open up the pinch using some sort of flat chisel, lever bar, strike through. I'm just gonna try and, so that should open that up a little bit. And then the second thing we can do, other than a big long bar, like that, I see it moved a bit more, is just smack on the arm as close to the ball joint as you can, while levering down. Is it going? It is. You can maneuver it a little bit. Or if it's getting really tight, now this, this feels like it's gonna go, but if yours is really tight, I'd move it up and down a few times. Do not get WD-40 on your discs. But what you can do is smack it back up. Get it moving with some WD-40 in there. There we go. Like that, and again. And there she goes, see? Symbols. Now, we can keep that there just to believe on it. If we turn now the hub the other way, like you were steering to the right, you can then pull the hub out of the way quite nicely. So we're going to push it shaft through the middle, try and keep our arm down. There we go. And that is the hub out of the way of the shaft. Now all you should have to do is give it a sharp tug and shaft comes out. Try not to get this end dirty, put a rag around it, keep it clean because you don't want grit and stuff ruining the new shit seal or getting inside your gearbox. Well done, you've just removed a drive shaft. 
Now we've repeated the process on the driver's side, right hand side, whichever country you're from, and uh, the only issue is, as you can see, our shaft won't come out. There's a reason. There's two 11mm nuts holding two bolts which rotate 180 degrees and have a little like hand flange that holds the centre bearing in on the shaft. So I'll go underneath, show you where they are. These can be the most annoying bits if you haven't got a little cheat tool. But um, I used to do them as an apprentice 15, 20 years ago. Um, cool, must be nearly 20 years ago now. And um, I got around it, you just, it's just a patient game, this one. Let's show you. So you should be able to see them. There's one, and there's two. And they're not, they don't look too bad. They're just a bit of a pain. It's a little squirt with WD, and they'll start moving around as you will come undone. You don't want to come all the way off. You want to leave the nut on the end, and then you can move it. There's, lock, uh, there's like a nylock in there. So you push them through, turn them 180, and then that gets them out of the way of the shaft being held in. That's the theory anyway. So let's undo those two, show you what it looks like and what you're aiming for. Okay, so with those undone, you can see one is all the way through. Um, they'll all move around. This one, nuts right on the end. And at the moment, I can't turn it. You know, it's a wiggle, but it won't turn properly. If I push it through like that and then turn it 180 degrees approximately, I can't pull it back through. That's because the flange on the other end, the little sort of hand, You've rotated round, and it's this side, which won't stop this bearing now coming out. So if I turn it 180 back round again and pull it, should find, like that, it'll come back through. So that's what you'll have to do later when you put the bearing back on and you're trying to get them back in. So sometimes you, to put it back on, you have to put like a screwdriver behind it from this, from this end, just to hold it in place while you do that back up. So for now, push it through, turn it 180 degrees, and that'll be out of the way of our bearing. Now next thing is if this won't just push out, you're gonna have to get a punch on the back of this bearing, give it a couple of taps, that'll loosen it up and that'll push the shaft out. Yeah, I'm sure that moved then. There it goes. See it? You see it? Because I can see it. Right. And then we move to over there. And then get it out of your way. There we go. A little dust seal on the end and I'll show you what you're expecting because it's easy to see it once it's out. So that's the little housing in there and you see those two little hands, one had bounced around. You see it there? So you're looking to get them pointing out nice and easy so then you can punch from behind and get the bearing out. From the shaft, the bearing, this is the bearing and this is what we were punching on from behind to push the shaft out. So perseverance is key. You can see it gets a bit sticky in there. So when you go to put this back in, I would clean it up with a bit of Scotch-Brite, a bit of WD-40, so that the next time you do this job, it will just go straight out. We're almost done underneath and then unbolting the gearbox. So before we go up, there's just a, one little job left to do. Power steering pipe often runs underneath like this, a couple of brackets and a little flywheel cover. Now someone's definitely been in here before and replaced these bolts. with the wrong ones, I'm guessing, because they're not usually 10s, they're usually 11s, and it's probably the wrong thread. So there should be some couple of bolts there, but not these. There we go. So we'll flip them out of the way, we'll probably replace them on the new gearbox with the right ones. Right, and now on the other side of the coin, there's a 10 up there and a 10 here. Now that 10 can stay on there, or we can get the bracket out of the way. Sometimes they're attached to this bolt here, which looks like it's been rounded off, which is a delight. Um, hopefully yours is not rounded off. That's one. I'm gonna have to switch for a deep socket for the one up top. what they look like. And then this little cover, you should be able to just wangle out. You see your back of your flywheel. Ooh, look, flywheel. 
bit of cover the side. So the only thing to do underneath um, once the top side's done is to support the engine, which we'll do later, and undo the bolts from below. So there's one, as I mentioned here, which has been rounded, one probably one of the trickiest there, and then a couple here, one for the starter and one for the box. So we'll leave them for now until we're ready to actually remove those and we're ready to support engine, gearbox, everything. Okay, so from above, we can't see the gearbox. Essentially, we just need to get to the gearbox. So there's a few things to do to get to the gearbox. You have to take uh, airbox out of the way, battery out of the way, battery tray out of the way, and a little airbox pipe here out of the way, and some other bits and bobs. And then we can get the starter, we can get the gearbox. Um, and on this one, on the HDI, there is some uh, heater core to, uh, with some plugs in it to heat up the water, which you probably won't have on a neck where you don't have an XUD and some other vehicles. So that's something just HDI specific. So start removing stuff, basically. I can't sort of say simpler than that. Remove your terminals, make sure you've got all your codes. There's a 10 millimeter down the bottom there. That holds the battery in, or it should be there. Battery out of the way, there might be a plastic cover. Some had them. Tray has some bolts, take the tray out of the way. And then we can easily get at this which most of the time is just kind of pushed in. There should be a bolt there, there's not. So I'll probably just unhook. You need to unplug our, our throttle position sensor, screwdriver in there. So let's get on with those things. Now the bracket for the throttle position sensor, which is here for some reason on a cable, um, <laughs> is attached to the airbox. So you might as well take, we well, have to take it all apart, but the wires are gonna get in your way. There's a little flick there, they're usually broken. The other side is pretty much broken. You're gonna kind of do both at the same time and then lift the plug. And as the other side is seemingly quite broken, yeah, it's just gonna lift up. Usually that's because people have had a go before and not lifted it up using, it's very hard to do it one-handed. They've not done it properly is what I'm saying. They've not lifted the clip both sides, they've just yanked it. Okay, so that wire's out of the way. A good amundo. Uh, and then you can actually just spin the throttle around and pull the cable out. Sometimes I find that just the easiest thing to do. And the cable should not take that path, but yeah, I'm not quite sure what's going on with there. But anyway, that's the cable undone. Next is the battery. Ones replaced on them. Um, sometimes they're just a, a little clip. Give them a wiggle, get them out of the way. Now you've got to get the battery off, you've got to get the starter off as well, so you have to disconnect your power. Just flick them out of the way for a second. And then we'll get on that 10. Like this. Hopefully it's not seized. Sometimes they are. I'm going to need a little pop for the top, aren't we? Can't just have these bits and bobs rattling around. And then, go handle! Not the cheapest, but it definitely has a go handle. Let's lift the battery out. Nice, start to see something. And then, under those four, unclip the wires from it, and you've got the battery tray out. Right, so we're just going to unclip this. The clip annoyingly is underneath. It's a bit frustrating. But you just give it a flick with a screwdriver. Like that. And it comes out. 
there's a little clip, just get a screwdriver underneath it and pull. Well, that's done. Uh, and then we're probably just gonna, we could disconnect it there or down here. Uh, same clip down the bottom there. Whatever takes your fancy, but I find the more stuff that's out of my way, I'm not gonna get in my way, the easier I find the job. And for the sake of a couple of extra minutes, getting a pipe off, I'm gonna take that option. Thank you very much. Okay, now, the air filter housing should just lift up now. There we go, and out of the way. Priority number one, before you move anything else, or even breathe, get some rag and pop the rag in the inlet. So you've just exposed that. Now, if you drop something down there, forget about it, start a car up. You're in a, a world of pain. So don't do that. Put some rag down there. We'll get our throttle cable out of the way. Now, if we disconnect that, we can get our earth cable out of the way as well. Someone's decided that that's the right route, which I don't really think it is. There we go. Let's get that out of the way over there. Earth cable over here. You're basically just trying to expose the gearbox as much as you possibly can. That essentially is your is your A game. The rest of the airbox off basically. So there's a 10 here, which will probably not come undone. Well, let's give it a go. Oh, it did. Wonderful. I'll take that back, what I just said. Now, if we lift that up and out of the way, it exposes those two 10s. Ooh. Which, once removed, once, once removed, into a pot of bolts. Should lift out like that. Oh, it's got a little clip on the back. That's nice. How pleasant. So, as you can see down there, perhaps there's a little clip that's on the coolant hose. It's actually very complete for your six, this. On a lot of cars, they're just these sort of clips, they're just not here anymore. People have cut them and removed them and broken them over the years. Um, we will do our best not to break them. There's another clip on the wire. And let's get that out of the way. I'm just going to feed it down and up. Keep it complete. There we go. Plan of attack next. All right, while we're down here, we may as well. Uh, we've got the, the um, battery disconnected, so we can just disconnect the starter, flop that back. And then this wire here can be also be removed, which happens to be a wire for our reversing sensor. It's just a simple plug, as you can see. Just done clips from the sensor on there. Again, so why you can just peel back out of the way. The more and more stuff that's out of your way, <laughs> the better. -er. Okay, eight mils. Start them and by hand. They're not that tight, they're really not. They shouldn't be anyway. There we go, you might need a little extension on that one. Like that. And then we can go to the cheat gun. Now the starter should just wiggle back and out of the way. If you're replacing the starter, you'll need to disconnect some more wires, but oh, she's stuck on there. Aluminium drift, hardest Mac. There it goes. Okay, just stuck on the dial. Starters out of the way. Um, one little final job that we, we could do around the front here, I expect. Before we move essentially to the back, just get a lever in there. Try and get some leverage on something. Take a bit of pressure off that clutch cable. Pull a cable through the little slot here. Show what we're aiming for. All right, so you've got to get that cable through that slot. So you're looking to try and get just a little bit of weight off the clutch just so you can bring the cable through like that. Don't want to pull on that cable too much. It'll uh, have an effect on the auto adjuster. Cool, so as you saw, we've got half the clutch cable off, we've got it at the arm, and then it's actually attached within the gearbox here at the back. Now this little clip, you want to try and just tease it out. It might flick, so just be careful. But as you tease it up and out, you'll find that it takes the pressure off the two kind of teeth either side. Let's just take that 
piece of metal out before we lose it. Show the cable. And um, it's these two little springs either side, little teeth, little fingers which hold it in. So once that metal clips out of the way, it's easy as pie. So I'm going to put that somewhere safe. You don't need to reinsert that and then it just pops straight out. So that's something else out of the way. Right, it's going well. Uh, we're going to need to gain some access. So let's have a look at seeing if we can find some space down the back there to attack the gear linkages. Now with an XUD engine, you're pretty much done in a way. There's a couple of relays at the back here that are attached to the battery tray. With an HDI, you have this extra bracket with the ECU, some more relays behind it. And you have this heater block. It's like a preheater when your engine's cold. Now, if it wasn't for either of those things, you just whip the uh, gear linkages off now and then take this bracket off here, lower the engine down, and we have the gearbox off, almost. Uh, as it is, we're going to have to get this bracket out of the way. So we have to get into the wheel well, and you'll notice there's like a hook, a tooth, and at the top there are 10 mil. So we'll clean it up, because we don't want to snap it, uh, with some WD and a wire wheel, undo that bolt, and then hopefully uh, we can remove that bracket with the ECU, We'll unplug it at the back there, that goes to a loom inside, take a couple of plugs off and we can flop that out of the way, move it out of the way as we, as we need. Not going to lie to you, this bit is quite a faff. Um, trying to get all this just mobile. Uh, we've got it off there and there's a little peg that it sits at the bottom as well. Um, but uh, yeah, okay. So, a um, couple of bolts, a couple of nuts here just to get the ECU free and that'll allow us just to unplug some stuff. Really want this out of the way just because of what a bind it is, trying to get your hand down the back, um, I find anyway. I just spend another five minutes just giving myself some more access. So we're just going to take this off. You could leave it there, I've got to admit. In the past I've done it as well, just dropped the gearbox down, giving me some access from underneath and from the side. Uh, but as I've got older, I prefer more access and be able to see what I'm doing. Now that's all flopped out of the way. Uh, the bracket uh, was a couple of clips for this one. Uh, there was two other 10 mils that just held on some relays and it came out pretty easy. And that's just flopped out of the way and it kind of gives you access to get your hand down there, etc, etc. Um, five minutes work makes the rest of the job a lot easier, so that's really good. Um, it would appear to me like someone's been in here before because there's a 13 mil here which doesn't look original which holds this bracket on, and the one at the back looks cross-threaded in and only in a little bit. But we still need to get both of those out. The other one is just there, I hope you can see that. Um, and funny enough, there is the original bolt ram rammed down the back of the gearbox here. Yeah, that's the original, interesting enough. Put that aside, just an extra one. So we're going to undo those two 13s, and then we're going to undo these three, four th 13s, one, two, three, four, get this plate out of the way and then we'll look about detaching the uh, gearbox linkages, which can be a, a bit of a bit of a faff, especially with this in the way. Two 13s, four 13s removed. All right, so there's our plate. We'll come to this mount in a moment. We may disconnect this and move the engine around just to be able to get to these linkages. And this is now sort of loose, free. Um, not really sure, you shouldn't expect this on yours. Someone has done something nasty to that bolt, which explains a lot. Um, I find on these a 14mm open-end spanner the easiest thing to try and flick these off. Now, it is quite tricky to show you. Uh, hopefully you can see. That's the end of our linkages. Let's see if we can get you in a better spot. It's pretty tight down there. So we've got three linkages. One right centre of shot there. One at the back, and one down below there, anchor one. So, now it's gone dark, that's perfect. There we go. Let's see what we're doing. So we're gonna try and get that one off there. Um, sometimes they just pop right off. Sometimes you have to replace them because they fall apart. But if you get your spanner in between the linkage and the arm, like that, hoping you might be able to see that, and then lever up your spanner, like so, it does pop off quite nicely. That's popped off really good. Let's do our lower one. Spanner in there, between the linkage and the lever.
Now you could also do it from the side. Pretty tricky from underneath, if I'm honest. There we go. Spanner in, lift up. See that one doesn't want to know so much. Now this one is the trickier one. So you can either, you can lever off the box like that, but you probably want a slightly bigger spanner because that's a bigger ball in there. So maybe a, a 15 or a 16 and that'll get in there and flick that off or use a lever bar. But don't damage them unless you've got replacements. I really would suggest you look after them. Take your time. When there's a will, there's a way. So these two popped off really nicely, but that lower one is feeling really bad, spongy, like it's gonna snap in half. So instead, I'm gonna take off these 213 bolts, which hold the bracket on instead. So let's take, take those bolts off and you'll see the bracket and that avoids us having to pop that off. And then we can just bolt that to the gearbox once the gearbox is back in. So cheap method essentially, but it all works, but just a treat. Yeah, so there's that bracket down there. That was very seized on. The bracket's not really twisting on that. We'll try and free it up once the gearbox is out, but uh, that was the only way that one was coming off. That will be unbroken. Now I want to drop this off next. Um, you undo this bolt here, gearbox drops down and there's two 13s behind. There's an earth here. I don't recall the earths being here. They're usually over here somewhere. Um, so expect it to be over there, but you are looking for an earth to the gearbox somewhere. That's where it happens to be on this one. But before we do that, we need to swap the engine. Before we do that, I find once the jack's under there, it's really awkward to slide under there. So there's two bolts at the top here and one on the side that hold the gearbox on. You can leave those tightened up. We can undo the other bolts from underneath and nothing's gonna go anywhere. It's all gonna be safe. I wouldn't drive like that, but it's gonna be safe until you've got everything supported, then you can do the rest from above. Here's the two I'm talking about. One of them is that almost rounded off eight mil hex. Hopefully yours is not almost rounded off. And the other one is that 16 millimeter up there. And that's probably one of your trickiest ones because of this pipe here. Um, if it was a XUD or another three or six, you don't have this pipe here. So, hmm, fun times with that one. Probably mostly spanner work. Um, and hopefully this one isn't too tricky. If it is a bit rounded off like that, just make sure you tap it home really, really well, the hex. Um, and as you turn it, tap it, and that might give you something. Um, and if it's really bad, turn it, tap it, and have a pair of grips turning all at the same time. So we're gonna remove those two, and then we're gonna get the jack under here, supporting it on a piece of wood, this area here, so that you can lower it down once the gearbox is disconnected and drop the gearbox out. Easy peasy. Okay, so. That's out far enough that's loose. Leave it up there, wedged in. That one out, not too bad. We've got this bracket alpha out of the way too, just breeze. And then you've got this plug. It's actually the speed sensor on an XUD. You have to disconnect the wire, um, literally a wire drive, cable drive. Uh, but a lot of others with ABS, it's a plug. The metal clip's actually from the other side, and it's up to you whether you attack it from below or above. But as you saw from above, there's not much space, so we've got to try and push the tab in and push it up from below. I'm gonna to have to get both hands in there, as usual. Um, and then I'll show you the clip afterwards, maybe when the gearbox is out. We've got that plug off. It is a bit of a tricky one. There's the plug. You see where my finger is, metal clasp. You have to push that in, flick it up. I find a screwdriver from one direction to put the clasp in, and then a screwdriver from below to flick it up. Then it pops straight off. Let's now support some engine gearbox in the lot. There's one jack just there, block of wood. And then we'll use the other jack, a second jack with a piece of wood to support the gearbox to help it on its way down. All right, we've got the drain plug back in, if I've not mentioned that already, so the uh, drain tray is out of the way. Block of wood and the jack under the sump. I'm gonna to move to the top now and remove that big nut in the middle from memory 18. And then that bracket, which is 213s, um, sort of that go horizontally into the side of the chassis that way. We've got our crank sensor, which is actually, let's bring it up. It's down under here. There's no way you can be able to see it on camera. Um, sits on top of the gearbox. I'll show you on the other gearbox. Sits there. So in the car, I'm holding you like this. It's there. And you can see it's a little flick up bracket, uh, cl plug, sorry. So get back to the actual car, you can see you won't be able to see it. Now you will be able to see it, not on camera, in person, with a torch. Come on. The alternative is to try and remove the sensor, but I doubt with that coolant sensor, a uh, coolant housing, there we go, she's off. 
Okay, I doubt with that coolant uh, housing in a way you'd actually manage that. Not properly. And there it goes, you probably saw it lower itself down as we did that. You're going to feel for it, it's under the bracket here. I'm going to loosen that front one. Loosen the rear one. Let's try and take the rear one out. That one's out. And that one should just slide up and out of the way. Ooh, we lost our little spacer. There it is. <clears throat> so that sits in there like that. It goes over there. You might say, yeah, that's exactly where they are in an HGI. I don't remember that, but maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, yeah, it does look like it might go there. But I always remember them going across the starter motor. Ideally, you want to take this off, this peg, because to get it past the chassis rail is a real pig and it pokes on you and hurts your hand. Yeah. Well, I have to admit, that doesn't happen very often. That does tell me this has been out with four. Uh, a 16 spanner will hold on, but only just. So power grips, alternatively, um, you could double nut it. A few different things you could try. It seems to be move Ooh, moving a little bit at the moment, but biggest issue with this. Oh, it is moving. Okay. Let's see if we can keep that moving for a bit longer. Ah. Uh, let's see if I can attack it from below. Just drop it down a bit more. Whee! Gently, as I said earlier, real gentle. He with grips. Oh, what a nasty noise. Okay. Yeah, so this box has at least been out once because that was too easy. Okay. So now that's out of the way, we are going to start taking off those other 16 mils. I tend to preference, this is just personal preference, <laughs> it looks all a bit of a mess. There's one here, easy to access, remove that one. Remove the difficult to access one at the back there. And then this one here, which is the easiest one to access, do that last. It's right there. So do the tricky ones, as I say, 16 millimetres. Right, prepare yourself. I'm going for the last bolt. Now the gearbox isn't just gonna, literally gonna flop out, but despite that, we're gonna get the jack ready and waiting to receive. There we go. So that is all the bolts. So if we just release the jack slightly, ha ha, you see the gearbox just move? And we don't want it just to fall off like that. It'll start damaging things. We want to slide the box off a little bit and then drop it down. So we're going to try that. <laughs> we're just going to try that. And try giving it a wiggle so we can slide it in this direction and then down. There we go. Oh, it's so greasy down the back. There we go, see? See that jump? So that is off the clutch now. Just gonna wipe my hands. I've got a bit more of a grip. And then we can just lower the jack a little bit. Okay. It's a combination between lowering the jack and just balancing the box. We don't want to damage the radiator at this point. It's quite possible to do that. The diff gets in the way here, as you can see. So sometimes you have to rotate it up. Sometimes you rotate it down. Frankly, whatever works. Oh, that is not sounding good, is it? So let's, uh, yeah, let's try one of those methods that I just mentioned. There's the speedo plug. Try taking the weight off it a bit more. Make sure there's no wires getting trapped. Oh, good. Turn the light off. That was good timing. 
do you? See, we are loose. And there it goes. Just drop it down. And you're ready to receive Jack. And because the car is up high enough, all you've got to do now is pull it out. Here's our clutch. Can't tell much at the moment. But you can see they're Torx bits. You can easily round those off. So you want to make sure you've got your bit is nicely seated in there. Now we can, you go for a quick jerk and it might undo it. Otherwise you might have to put a bolt back through here. For instance, you could put one here or up here and you thread it in a few times like that and then you put a lever bar in on the flywheel against this and uh, that will stop it turning so again let's do the things I've just said I will do okay so that's a T40 and uh, I think for each one I'm going to give it a little tap before we attempt to undo it just make sure it's seated nicely as I say like sometimes you can give it a little jerk and it'll just come undone and other times you might have to support it certainly when you're talking these up you've probably got to support them use the appropriate side of your ratchet really got to put pressure on them they're really shallow bolts so easy to round off and then you'll be in a world of pain and you'll end up just grinding and cutting them off you really you don't want to be there promise me that you don't do that go go see the job we did on the the 206 daily oh there it goes see that one not good not good at all she wants to round off and turn at the same time she's a bit tight so what we can do is just nip the two next to it up a bit because the pressure of the plate may well be causing it to be tighter than it actually is. So I'll just do those two back up and see if that helps. Yeah, there we go. Make sure you keep these safe. We'll probably be reusing them. Most clutch kits don't come with new ones. Okay, maybe not, maybe not. Might need a little bit of leverage, a bit of encouragement. We have got them all, haven't we? Oh, yep, thank you. I heard you, I heard you. I got them all, that's fine. Right, so a little bit of leverage just to wiggle them off. There's some dowels you can see. It can be a bit tight on them sometimes. There we go. And she's off. Come on, get off that last dowel. Wiggle, wiggle. Oh yeah, looking lovely. That is a very worn out clutch. Okay, so congratulations. Essentially, you have done half the work required to change your clutch. All right, that was the tough bit. There's one other tough job left to do, but yeah. So if your clutch looks anything like that, it's not good. You can see lots of, um, grazing, uh, glazing, cooking, it's been slipping quite badly. You see it's down on the rivets on that side. It's not on this side, but it's definitely been slipping mad on the other side. Um, and down to the rivets on, on that side. Thankfully, it's down to the rivets on the pressure plate side, not the flywheel. If the flywheel was all scored and heated, you'd have to resurface the flywheel and then potentially get a clutch that matches the resurfaced flywheel because you take material off a flywheel well, that's really cooked one side. Not good at all. The next job is to clean off the flywheel, brake cleaner, um, a little scotch bright just to clean it up and put the clutch, new clutch on, torque to spec. Tips before you fit the clutch, make sure you've got torque wrench ready. Uh, make sure you've inspected the new clutch, that it is actually new and that it's grease free. So we can see some bits on there already. I reckon it's been unboxed once. Um, usually it comes with a little bit of grease and I can't find any little tub of grease, well not grease, a little tube of it. it just goes on 
the splines on the on this, um, which is the release bearing, which I'll come to in a second. It's already greased, so that's nice and clean. That's what we want to see. We've cleaned up the flywheel. That's absolutely immaculate, grease-free. Take note of gearbox side. So it's going to fit to the engine like that, yeah? Gearbox side. Easy mistake to make. Be surprised how many people have made that. So we're going to put them together. Now you could just use a screwdriver. I use these little pegs. Uh, you can buy like proper setup kits, like screw together and everything. That's all I use. You're just trying to centralise that clutch to the centre of the flywheel when you push this on. Hopefully you can see down the centre there, all nice and in line. Now if it's not, you use that dowel or a screwdriver or something to wiggle it round. I tend to pinch it on three. One, two, three. Just very lightly pinch and then you can move the clutch friction plate inside there, that one says gearbox side, still see that? So that's in line with the flywheel behind. If it's not, you're never getting that gearbox on or it'll be extremely difficult. So have a good look, make sure it's lined up and then tighten that pressure plate down. Okay, the other bits that I would always do on a uh, clutch change or gearbox change is obviously the uh, pressure plate bearing, clutch release bearing, whatever you like to call it. Um, it's looking a bit wobbly on both of these. Uh, this one isn't making horrific noises, at least. Um, but the new one should make even less horrific noises. Uh, a little bit of lube on here, it doesn't hurt, but this has been pre-lubed, and a little bit of lube on those. But don't go mental with that, just a tiny little bit of grease, because if it flicks out onto your clutch, you're in trouble. So it just clicks onto there, and then to check that's working, just move the arm, make sure that's nice and free. Good, that's nice. Um, you could put a tiny bit of grease on here as well, but again, same problem. Unless it's, um, you know, I just, I just wouldn't bother. I'd rather just give them a really good clean up uh, with a wire brush, make sure there's nothing damaged on this um, before you go there. Now you could replace these bushes. This is a very high mileage, or this is really moving around. There's got a little bit of movement in there, but it's not excessive. I wouldn't do so. Unless this is leaking, I also wouldn't touch this seal, but I would do these seals here because they have more of a tendency to leak. In fact, the old one, it, they were leaking like crazy. A lever bar in there to lift it out. Try to just lever, not on the casing. You're levering just the seal out. And I'll show you what I mean by that. One-handed, it's not difficult. And as you can actually see on this one as well, when you tap them in this side, slightly protruding, the other side flush. So we're just gonna try and only there we go, we managed it. So we didn't, look, didn't damage the casing, and we just got the seal out. Clean that out, tap the new one in, same the other side. So that's the new seal this side, fitted flush, and the new seal fitted this side with a bit of a leak. Not flush, just sticking out a little bit. Hate gearbox oil. At least it's had some in it, I suppose. Okay, well done. So I'd say you're essentially halfway now You've conquered like, just over halfway. The next trickiest bit is fitting the gearbox back on. So you're about to wrestle this, so have a good stretch, is what I would honestly say to you right now. Have a good stretch. Make sure your back's feeling strong and you're happy. And then, in preparations, in here, you want to make sure you've got a couple of bolts ready to hand, these 16s that go at the top. So as soon as you actually have it seated in its right position, you're ready to go. Make sure there's no wiring in the way. Nothing going to catch your hands. Tie it out of the way with a cable tie if absolutely necessary so that everything is clear to go for you to manhandle the gearbox in. It's a good opportunity if you do have a friend that's going to help, get them now. <laughs> and as soon as this gearbox is slotted home, then um, yeah, put a bolt in. You need to bring the box up and level with the crankshaft. So that input shaft has to be level to slide to the clutch and slide in really nicely. If you're trying it at all sorts of angles, it's just not gonna go in. As soon as it is right, it will just slide straight on. Dowels will go straight on and just put the bolt in easy. If you're struggling with it, it's probably because you've got the wrong angle. So get comfy, get comfy, get the right angle, whoosh, slot straight in. Now often clutch jobs, gearbox jobs, it's more about technique than it is about strength. I am not very strong. I am not very big. But I will be able to get this gearbox in. Yep. 
using the weight on the jack. Easy, easy. Make sure you can see what you're doing. I'll run out of battery in a minute. Okay. Okay, that diff needs to drop in that gap at the back. That's fine. Right. So I'm aiming the input shaft. Make sure my wires are out of the way. Okay. And here goes. Lift and slide. Lift and slide. Force it. Just wiggle and slide. Wiggle and slide. There it goes. It slid. Okay. Rotate to match the dowels. There we go. She's in. And you've got that 16 mil real handy. Oh, we've missed. We have missed something. Oh, I'm aiming for the wrong hole. That's why. Made to panic, that's a starter. Right, here we go. Okay, just nip it, okay. And you're safe, now stretch your back, relax. Well done if you've got to this point. Well done, super job. Okay, so at this stage, you're gonna put all your gearbox bolts back in, torque them all up. All the torque settings I'm gonna put in the description down below. And then just take it step by step, all right? Once you've got your gearbox bolts in, you need to make it safe. So put your pin back in, your mount back in, and then clutch cable, gearbox uh, linkages, make sure you've got a clutch, it feels okay, make sure you can select all your gears, because if you get to the end and realize you haven't, then you've got to take loads more stuff off. Once you've got your gear linkages and your mount in, and you've got, you know, it feels like, yep, yeah, I've got a nice clutch, I've got all my gears, the next step, because you want to fill from here for your gearbox, there is a full point on the, on the side, but it's much easier at this point, is to get your the drive shafts in, our speedo drive, don't forget your little plug under here, which does your crank speed, which helps the engine start, <laughs> uh, and then fill up. Gearbox all into there to 17, and on the side of the engine, a gearbox, sorry, is actually your level plug, that plug. So take that plug out, keep filling up until it dribbles out of there, and you're done. But you have to have your shafts in first, otherwise it will leak absolutely everywhere. Any questions you've got before you're about to start, put the comments below. Any questions you have during, send us a little message. I can, you know, I'm happy to help if I can, um, but uh, make sure you attempt this if you're feeling strong, you're feeling able, you've got some mechanical knowledge already, you've got a good few tools available to you as well. But thanks for watching Piggy Power. Please let your mates know if you found this video helpful. This is Piggy out. Ha <laughs> ha!